Hello everyone and good morning. Welcome to game number two between uh, IG and eHome. Apologies, I wasn't here for game one. It took me a long, a long time to get into work. Bus problems, traffic, all sorts of nonsense. But thanks, based base kip for once again stepping in, really saving esports. Thanks, thanks, really from the bottom of my heart. There was no one else to step in, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that cast, and we'll get headed into game number two straight away. Joining me today is Slash. Hopefully you can save me from Murphy's Law, because uh, this, this morning has been a bit messy for me. Oh yeah, I mean, we are of course referring to everything that can go wrong will go wrong, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, it can only get better from here, right? In theory. Uh, well, <laughs> in, in theory, but we'll, we'll see how things go. Indeed, so, yes. So, Ehome versus IG, this was meant to be VG versus IG, but changed at the, uh, at the last minute a little bit there. But let me just change the Twitch title as well. Uh, that might be helpful. Indeed, Ehome, they are actually running with their full lineup this time around. Um, the past couple of days we've seen, seen them running around with Win, the pub star from China, well, from the, from the Chinese ladder. But uh, Lanham is actually playing this game. So Ehome really trying to you know, bring, bring their A game to the table. After losing 0-2 to CDEC, they really need to at least uh, try to draw with IG, uh, considering that they lost the first game. Uh, in order to you know stay stay in the competition and try to move on to the playoff stages, uh, in the first game they banned out the Axe as well as Storm Spirit. These two heroes that IG used to great success during major All Stars, uh, and no big surprise overall. But this game around we will see the Ferrari Storm Spirit though. It's been let through the pool. IG themselves banning the Axe and Ehom uh, banning Troll Water as well as the Bat Rider. So Wisp is also in the pool still. Um, I'm still not sure why Ehome don't really pick the hero. I mean, Lanham is in the team after all. Maybe they just haven't practiced it. Yeah, it's entirely possible. I'm just looking at the standings right now. Obviously, IG have uh, just started playing after returning from Major All Stars, so they're back in the D2CL. They've currently, well, they're currently two and zero after the win they just had. They're three and zero. They've, they've got a lot of games left to play. They've got a lot of games left to play. While Ehome are five and five, so they are literally middle of the table, smack bang there. With uh, five wins and five losses, VG at the top with ten and two. So you know, th th there are lots of possibilities here. Down at the bottom, unfortunately, VG potential are two and ten. But like you said, Ferrari Storm. Let's see what he does with this game, Chen, uh, for for IG there. Not something I've seen them. Uh, I didn't watch Major All Stars. I don't know if this is something they've they've brought out. Because I've been seeing a lot of like a lot of Rubik, AA, Lena. I, yeah, I guess most time it is banned. You're right. I mean, Tran's still one of the best Chen Enchanters players or, or in the Eastern scene, maybe even the best uh, in, in, in that regard. So no big surprises here. Um, I believe IG overall is... Ferrari always has those kind of signature heroes, but most of the time he does really well with one hero, and at some point people realize like, how good he is with a hero, and then he just moves on to another hero. I mean, it used <laughs> to be AA mid in the CCM days, Cruel Catastrophic Memories in Dota 1. Uh, where he played AA mid a lot, and Invoker, of course, the, the hero that he's most known for, uh, called uh, the Pianist. Um, so it, it used to be AA Invoker, then he moved on to TA, he's still rather notorious for killing RTK's Broodmother with, uh, with the side blades. Then Ember Spirit for a little while. And Ember, exactly. Yeah. Then we had Ember. Now it's currently Storm Spirit. Don't know if I'm missing out. I mean, his, his SF has always been pr uh, pretty good. To Puck, I believe, for some time as well. Yeah, he's, he just simply... He's, he performs really well on all kinds of metagame here mid heroes, and he always seems to be at the top. Um, that's why, what's really impressive about him. And uh, of course, now with with the new lineup, IG, uh, Ferrari among as well as Faith and Chuan, looking to be the first three players that can win the TI two times. Uh, oh, but yeah. we, they still have a long way to go, though. Uh, first of all, they have to get past him. <laughs> They've got to get past Sniper as well, picked up there. Actually, Sniper is another hero I've seen Ferrari play. It doesn't... It, you know, from, when you look at it in a drafting perspective, you don't really think, oh, that, that, that's a Ferrari hero, because he likes, like you said, these mobile, sort of uh, elusive heroes that can do a lot of burst damage, where you can just pick someone off and suddenly escape with, with a couple of HP left over. But Eom taking up the Sniper as, as well as the Juggernaut, so far looking like a pretty standard pub game. But we'll, we'll see how it progresses. Lion is a really good support here. Up against yeah. Storm Spirit. You know, we, we're seeing Storm picked into Lion, into Disables, because that's how comf uh, confident and comfortable people are playing with this hero. You can farm up quickly. You've got that long-range super initiation that you don't really care too much about heroes disabling you early on in the game. 
Yeah, you, one thing you most of the time it's since Lion is no longer being played in a solo mid role, he t tends to hit level six a bit later than usual. He still is one of the best heroes against Storm, of course, but if Lion is the primary target anyway, then you just go in and vortex him and, and kill him before anything happens, really. Um, on the other hand, also the new Storm item build, where many people just go for Bloodstone first, Ferrari is one of them. Uh, and the just going for the early point booster and having strength threats makes it, most of the time makes you tanky enough to survive the finger combo. And that's also playing a big part in it, I believe. Uh, at the same time, Ehome blinking the sniper into the storm, also a bit unusual, rather. Storm considered one of the best heroes to close the distance onto the sniper and kill him. Um, but yeah, I mean, still a powerful hero overall. And he, at least until level 6, sniper does really well against storms from mid lane. Yeah, we'll see where they put him, though. With the Phoenix, it most likely will be towards the mid with Phoenix off lane and Juggernaut safe. But we have seen this fiery bird head into a support role every now and then. It's, it's, it has been IG, hasn't it? You've mentioned this before where they have yeah. Phoenix in the four role. And when the off laner, like a clockwork, someone goes moving around at level six, or if a Tidehunter needs to go into the jungle or Ancients to take out some stacks, the Phoenix can go there and get level six. And it's a very good holding support that can you know, switch around lanes. Can definitely do very well one versus one against uh, the enemy supports, but Spirit Breaker, pretty tanky ass hero. It's going to be difficult to to zone him out of the lane, even with yeah. Fire Spirits and Earth Spike. Yes, I believe Ehome is still going to run the Phoenix on the off lane row, though. This, this, I don't actually. Thing is, I don't know. I've never seen RTK play the hero, so I'm not sure how well he really does. Um, no, me neither. So, but Phoenix still, I think they picked it because they already saw the supports coming out from, from in IG. I mean, Rubik, Chen, Chen is going to be mostly in the jungle, and Rubik alone can't really uh, kill the Phoenix that easily. IG, of course, they haven't picked up their carry hero just, just yet, but prioritizing the Spirit Breaker, no big surprise here. Another hero that Luo did a lot of work on uh, during Major All-Stars, fulfills a bit of a similar role to the Axe, and as well, another good hero to a close distance onto the Sniper, so no big surprises here. Well, IG expecting the support Phoenix there, banning out RTK's Tidehunter. So, I'm kind of feeling the same way, you know, you meant... Okay, maybe not then. Now, in Europe, if this was, you know, a game that involved a European team, Eastern, Western, whatever, CIS, or, or Western Europe, I'd say this is the potential here for an off-lane treant and having, having a core treant that farms up Aghanims. I, I don't know, has this caught on in China? It, it feels like this is just going to be a straight-up support treant, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I've okay. seen him picked, I think, once um, overall, and he's been he's been used as a support mostly. Yeah, and, you know, getting some support items most of the time, like arcane boots, medallion, and um, that kind of stuff. But I don't know why. It's going to depend on who picks up what. As I said, I have never seen ROTK play Phoenix before. Uh, so let's see how well he does on the hero, or if he picks up the trend protector. Who knows? But oh. Burning Snark, also a bit unusual. We don't see him playing the hero too often, but another hero that can close in the distance onto the Sniper with Shadowblade or Blink Dagger. Yeah, definitely. Now, Bur Burning's hero pool, it, I don't know if it has expanded, it just feels like it's expanded. You know, you think of Burning, you think of Anti-Mage, Spectre, all these hard uh, farming carries. But over the past year or so, you know, he's expanded his repertoire. He's definitely become this very, well, I don't know, if he's always been that act more active carry, finding farm in between helping his teammates in fighting. He isn't just that farming machine. He is such an adept carry at actually you know, taking people down and, and making an impact elsewhere in the game than just that CS chart. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain reason why people you know, look up to him and consider him the best carry ever in Dota. I mean, one of the best carries in the West, Black basically looks up to him and kind of tells you something, that burning for, of course, you know, that reputation doesn't come uh, that easily. So you have to be really... You have to be incredible for so many pro players to respect you, especially in the Chinese scene as well, where he's, uh, his nickname is Emperor B. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And during Star Letter last year, I believe he played, in all 10 matches, he played a different hero. So, yeah, yeah. already back then, he had 10 different carries. I mean, he, he used to play like, stuff like Klings, Lone Druid, Morphling, Anti Mage, Spectre, pretty much everything that's currently being used. I believe he played Stark during Major also as well. I can't really remember. I believe in one of the games against Empire, he did play the hero. He's not allowed to retire. Burning, you are not allowed to retire. Uh, he's tried before. And the, yeah. the, and, and, and <laughs> Nobody then, really retires from Dota, no. let's be honest. And then the team is like, hey, hey, look, Burning's retiring. How about we ask him to play with us? Oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll play with you guys. Don't worry about it. Ferrari and Chuan here just juking it out. ZYF and ROTK. 
What are they doing? <laughs> Planting up. Does that block the large camp? Or is that just vision? See, this is one thing. There are these new unusual ward spots. Like that right there. The box of this camp is, is, is like that. I don't know if it overreaches and goes over that ward, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what it actually does. Up on top lane, we've got DDC playing the support train. RTK on that off lane. Phoenix in flame. Sniper is charged up. The pounce goes down onto RTK. Lifted in the air. He's got no dive. The fire spreads down to everyone, though. This could be great for E-Home. They turn back around. Faith's going to get taken down by the shrapnel as in flame. Looks for more onto Luo. No more fire spirits and no more slows. But that, that charge was super overzealous. But going in there into fire spirits and shrapnel, those two level one spells are ridiculously good in these choke points. I mean, what's Chen going to do, really? <laughs> yeah, Chen <laughs> level one. Wreck. Yeah, Chen level one is kind of, you know, burning and only pounce on one target. Faith, if he goes for Tetakinus, which he did, he doesn't deal any damage. Oh, Chuan. Uh, Where are you going to do it? So that Observer Ward can confirm 100% blocks that uh, blocks that spot there. DDC, Lich Seed onto Burning. Oh, this is really annoying. Fire Spirits are yet to fly, but that's a good telekinesis from Faith. He's allowing Burning to walk himself back and escape from that. Chuan oh, so doesn't place a sentry, and that's his large camp done for. Golem camp, of yeah. course. <laughs> and he finds golems. Uh, this is... What's next? Oh my god, he's really unlucky. Points of set setters are pretty useless as well. He's gonna, he's gonna, is he gonna put down the sentry at some point? Yep. He is, and it's, is it in range? Yeah, it should be, right? There we yes. go. Fortunately for him. But let's have a look at these lanes, because we've got we've DDC and RTK on this top lane, Trian and Phoenix up against Burning Slark, while Faith is on the Rubik, mid lane in Flame Sniper against Ferrari's Storm Spirit. Now, Storm against Sniper, this, this lane is, is pretty even early on, you know, Sniper can get some right clicks in there, but it, it comes down to Ferrari on the Storm, pushing out the creep wave, and... Really controlling equilibrium. Because you push the creep wave into the sniper's tower, it means he has difficulties last hitting. And then it also means the lane pushes back out towards your ramp, where you can hold it up here and then go and do damage back to the sniper. Then when, once Storm hits level 6, that's when things get completely out of control. That's when it goes from being, oh, top lane, RTK, he got pounced and telekinesis is up into the air, but Burning can't finish him off. The living armor will, will keep RTK healthy. Hellbear actually missing the clap there, which was unfortunate. Oh, Ferrari. Ferrari's dead! Shrapnel, right clicks, okay! Yep. This lane, not so even anymore. Sniper finds the kill. I did tell you, before level 6, Sniper has the advantage. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not that big, though. It's not like, that big, it, it, no, but Ferrari, it's, you know, if, you, if he's a bit out of position, yes. and then he played a bit greedily. He really wanted that bottle. You can look at his gold. I mean, he's very, very close to it, and he even buys the TP score himself. Like, I would have probably called <laughs> to one of my supports yeah. to buy TP for me instead, but uh, you have very, yeah, it's unfortunate. You have very little uh, room for error in this matchup as a Storm. Yeah. You know, you want to be pushing the lane out, but one misstep, one... You, you sort of get, like, 50 range out of position, 10 range out of position, then you're hit by a triple shrapnel on your route back to the tower. And there's no way you can survive through the right clicks. Down in bot lane, ZYF on the Juggernaut, while Lanham is playing that Lion support team. Luo on the Spirit Breaker. And he's doing decently down here, level 2, nearly nearly hitting 3. Oh, smoked up trend. Oh, RTK. Aggressive onto Faith? Yeah, he's gonna get this kill. Another right click, the Fire Spirits go down. Ticking him over slowly but surely and burning. Cannot, uh... Oh, can he? Oh. Can he? The leap! He pounces right onto the back side of RTK, somehow leashing him in place. But with the tranquil yeah. boots, with a little bit of extra armor, you know, allowing him to, <sighs> allowing him to just waddle away. Well, what is this? RTK is not feeding on the off lane. That's weird. It's a uh, seems like a different game all of a sudden. He has a hero oh. with an escape mechanism. No. He, well, okay, come on. It's against <laughs> IG. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to make things more difficult for himself. Yeah, yeah for you. Difficulty watch uh, being set to easy mode. Uh, not, yeah. not feeding too badly. But Ferrari, meanwhile, he did die once again to the smoke trend, as I said. And no big surprises here. Big, big tree coming in with a huge right clicks and double shrapnel. Very little that Ferrari could really do. And Inflame getting a solid hold there is going to hit level 6 before Ferrari hits level 5. That's ridiculous. But yeah, before level 6, Storm Spirit is definitely one of those heroes that you either have to play very passively on before you hit 6, because obviously it becomes... Uh, immensely more difficult to take you down once you do hit that ball lightning level or you play super aggressively just to put the fear into your opponent and make it seem like you know you're, you're dominating the lane there are so many mind games that come into this because you're, oh, you're a squishy hero but you revealed they find the sniper telekinesis back but i don't think this is that where they want to be 
The troll Tron trap goes down onto the sniper, but he's just gonna chase and chase. DDC and Lanham going onto Chuan, Inflame onto Faith, Assassinate will finish off the Rubik as Chuan gets swiped into the ground by that big old Treant. Yeah, not looking good there for IG. Meanwhile, top lane burning no. out by his former teammate as well. There's a solo kill from ROTK. ROTK, he's doing really well this game. 2 0 and 1, Tranquil Boots, 1100 gold. Do you go for Urn? Midas? He goes for his, um. It's like his patented Ring of Regen. Cav Cav Ring of Regen, yeah. yeah. Regardless of what he's going to be going for, he, he likes to build the Ring of Regen. Could be going, you know, could be going a mech, obviously. Most, most likely that's what's good, what it's going to be. But on Tidehunters and things like that, and he goes for the Ring of Regen because he can go into mech, can go into pipe, can go into four staff, more importantly, I feel. There are lots of uses for it, but that extra little bit of regen in the lane, al always useful. Yeah, I mean, overall, ID effectively lost all lanes, if you think about it. I mean, bot lane was lost from the very start, and Spirit Breaker off lane against Juggernaut plus uh, Lion, nothing to do there. Mid lane once again for Ryu, he just hit 6 now. He is level 6, 22 experience over, so he'll be very thankful for that. But yeah, that one creep. Top lane, 13 last hits on the Slark. Against the Phoenix, he can't really do too much. Fire Spirits means he can't last hit. Phoenix has decent, well, really good attack damage and a decent attack animation. Uh, Ehom were took and just taking full advantage of the fact that IG have a Chuan, so they're essentially 5 versus 4 on lane, and then they have the global presence of the trend to protect people as well. Um, mid lane's being won by the Sniper, of course, I mean, Farai is not too far behind in terms of CS though, so that's decent, I guess. Yeah. But look at Inflame just as yep. <laughs> the, the way he's playing. <laughs> just go and right click him down a little bit. Chuan now on this top lane has his work cut out for him. He's not been really farming decently. You know, sometimes we see a level 5 or even level 6 uh, Chen by this time. If you're just farming the jungle with a wild wing. He has tried to move around, smoke up, get some... Tried to grasp some some kind of power back from the rest of the map, but not really succeeded too well. Ehome have done an excellent job. Let's see if Ehome can keep that cool and... You know, actually, maybe able to do something. Luo getting a little bit mana drained. He's only level one. He doesn't really do that much. He lost what, like ten mana or something yeah, like exactly. that. Exactly. Um, and mana drain by itself also costs ten mana. I think Lanham is pretty much not even getting anything out of it. But e home they just want to hold the advantage. I mean, Burning's not level six yet. I mean, he's gonna hit level six after this creep wave. There we go. Gonna use Dark Pack rather liberally, and Another meanwhile mid lane. Mid. Assassinate, gonna get cancelled out there, Storm Spirit. How much mana does he have? He has enough. Oh. He has enough. Oh, he spots them! He spots them in flame! <laughs> Nothing can uh, touch this guy. He's bulletproof. Uh, it's really unfortunate, because IG, they didn't have a ward on mid lane, so they couldn't really judge the positioning of the sniper. Otherwise, they would have gone in early, I believe. But, uh, and look who's behind him. DDC yeah. is standing there with his tree and just... I, I don't think they're waiting. killing him. He's got eight one charges as well. That's, I don't even think they have the damage to do so. Now, item progression wise, what are we going to be looking at here? Juggernaut going for the pretty standard, you know, face boots, mask of madness, ring of aquila build. B build up some stats. Increase your farming speed in the jungle with the mob. They're taking tier one tower eight minutes in. Like, this, yeah, this is a, a natural pushing pair. Sure enough, Juggernaut is decent once he hit, get, hits his levels and he's got healing. Oh, oh what a player! Goes in there for the right click, the charge out, but spin and TP. Okay, here, here comes Ferrari. They want Lamb, Sniper's joined, Phoenix, oh, Supernova, nice does he have level 6? He does not have mana for Egg, but Ferrari's still gonna fall. Assassinate, not even no, he's not even gonna need it. Our no. ticket rotating in just the right time. That's so many big plays carrying out there from the Ehome squad. I mean, ZYF going in with a Blade Fury to get the last hit against the Spirit Breaker, then TP's out in instant instantly, and then... Gets back to base, regions back up, double impact camera from Lanham. RTK rotation, 9 for 0. Just after this game, I want an RTK Phoenix Arcana. <laughs> I, th I think he deserves it, just just this game, right? It, it's one performance, it, it means a lot. It's, it's against IG. But... He's, he's doing very well. Ferrari, looking a little bit limited there, but Sol Ring and Bottle will be able to keep himself going. Jungle has not been stacked up for him because they've got a Chen. So that's another, you know, I, I don't want to see an issue with a Chen, but it's a drawback. It's, a, it's one of the drawbacks of having a Chen is that with the greedy mids like Shadow Fiend and Storm, who like to dip back into the jungle and take some stacks out, quite often there aren't any left to take. Yeah, unfortunately, Chen isn't even that farmed yet. I mean, he's got enough gold for Arcane Boots, but he isn't level 6 yet, and Ehom are looking just to group up and take towers now. 
Yeah. Indeed they are. They've got Urn up on RGK as well as the 1,000 gold has managed to save up for himself. DDC walking around with 1,000 gold on him. Hey, everyone, have 1,000 gold. 5,000 net worth up on Inflame. ZYF sitting at about 4.5k. RTK is 1,000 ahead of the Storm Spirit. 1,000 ahead of the Slark. Uh, Arcane was being picked up by DDC as well. Let's see if he does go for Ar Arcanum Scepter at some point, but... I think in China it hasn't really caught on. Well, they've got Urn on the on the Phoenix. Maybe oh, DDC goes for the mech. Burning. What are you doing? He actually leapt in there. <laughs> he didn't even get, get the, the bounty rune. rune. <laughs> he he leaps in. Oh, uh, they they can't stop him, right? That range though, unleash seed. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, thousand range, thousand gold, thousand range. Everything's a thousand. E home, they're just gonna solidify advantage once again. Start by grouping up, and it's something that lineups with spirit breakers or storm Sword, they just dread it. You know, if you you start five finding them, they can't really go in. And Chen is not can't defend either, so the only thing IJ can really do is try to split farm. It's uh, try to be more efficient overall. And Ruby can't really do anything either, and they're just gonna die. So E Home, with the ad item advantage that they have, they're just gonna take down tier ones everywhere. And this is like perfect timing to play against what IG would want to be doing. Because you're saying, you know... Oh, burning? Oh dear. Assassinate. He it in he, his ulti is on cooldown. He can't bounce. He jumps into DDC and gets leashed up and now the Sunray from RGK is going to burn Three, through him. 3, 2, burn. 1. Bottle. There we go, Shadow Dance. He's got pants again in a couple of seconds. He turns back around. It's RTK oh, for the kill, but a supernova comes back out. Burning leaps across the tier one tower, and now the TPs come in. Supernova lands onto a couple of heroes. The overgrowth holds for Faith, Luo, and Ferrari in place. In flame, try to do as much damage from the sidelines as he can. We'll take down the Rubik. The Sunray oh, sun burning ray. through everybody's. Ferrari's dropping really low here. Does he get it? No, he does not. Schwan now going to be the fourth victim of E Home's massacre as IG are getting crushed by their own tower. That was pretty insane. Burning, you know, surviving for a really long time, courtesy of uh, Dark... Uh, not Dark Pack, not Pound, sorry. Shadow Dance coming out of cooldown just in the nick of time, but forcing his team to fight in a very d disadvantageous position, and ROTK again with a big place. Fire Spirit, Sunray, everything just spot on from RTK who now has a Midas on his Phoenix. 12 minutes in. This guy is insane. He looks like he really wants to contest Ice as Ice for the title of best Phoenix. Oh yeah. Rubik, Faith, 900 net worth, just hit a thousand with a bounty rune, so you know, he's, he's not doing too too well. The charge down to bot lane in flame. He's, he's super tanky. Drums, Aquila, and Strength Threads, along with Magic Stick. He's gone full out. Hey, look, guys. I was a squishy hero, but now I've got 1,100 HP. What are you going to do? You don't have any instant nuke damage. You've got no Finger of Death or anything like that. You have slow, sustained, right-click damage. Slark and Storm. You know that they can jump in, they can initiate well, but it takes a while for them to do their damage. It isn't just, you know, instant. And overall, net worth wise, 7k up now on this juggernaut. But the sniper died up at top, so we did lose out a little bit there. Roshan, how easy is this going to be for, for Ehome? Because there's no mm. big ultimates from IG. It's still a bit disadvantageous to fight in the pit, I think, with Ferrari constantly being able to scout with Rannins and whatnot. And Lua getting scouted there by DDC. <laughs> Gets knocked a little oh, bit. He does have charge that's though. That's unfortunate. Assassinate's gonna cancel it. No, he's waiting, he's waiting. He's, why he's why waiting. isn't he charging? <laughs> well, I thought he was holding onto it the first time for overgrowth, which I thought was well yeah. played. And then mm -hmm. the second time, Assassinate, uh, the mini stun could cancel it. But you've got to, ch like, you have to charge. Yeah, I mean, Maybe there was no target. The, the creep wave's at top hasn't met. Creep well, wave. The, the, the mid lane there was now. Yeah. Really. Uh, oh. So watching mid lane, there was definitely a creep wave there. So maybe just, you know, not being able to click there in time or misclicking. Sometimes, you know, in the, if you're in such a sticky situation, maybe you don't just, you don't move the camera that precisely anymore. It happens. Burning, pouncing away. Yes, I was going to look at the net worth graph. Usually I wait until... You know, closer to 20 minutes to see yeah, how bad things are, unless unless it's an even game and you know things are going back and forth. I want to see who has the slight Top lead. Lane. Top lane, what's going on? Okay. There's a charge coming in. The fan said YF. He spins. Oh. He doesn't TP. And I guess with a bash going through that magic community, that's perfectly acceptable. The healing ward now dropped to try and keep him alive. Burning. 
Okay, they're gonna try and find a kill here, but the Omnislash comes out. The healing uh, hand of God from IG. Not entirely sure who that was aimed at. Maybe a bit scared that the Omnislash kills someone off. Yeah, I mean, it, it was fairly close to the tier 1 tower, and RTK did manage to TP in. But, uh, they get a high priority to kill, which is pretty nice. I don't actually know how they managed to get vision of him the first time around, but charge also once again coming on towards the bot lane as Spirica coming in, but no nether strike though, so he's probably gonna cancel it, I imagine. Oh no, is he gonna go for it? Nope. Um, I, I'm wondering if it was this Dire Observer Ward nether rune spot and the Juggernaut ran from like the medium camp up to the other camp or something like that, but I'm not, I'm not mm. too sure. Definitely a really good pickup though, despite the fact that, you know, Juggernaut's still net worth leader. What does Ferrari have? Finishes himself up some treads. Do you, do you go Orchid this game? Do you just try and go into Bloodstone? Honestly, I think with the, I would... Don't know. I think Bloodstone is probably the best, um, BKB? best choice. Because I think the timing of Orchid is just would be too off. Yeah. You know, it's a bit late for it. Well, it's still good against RTK's Phoenix and I'm throwing on the Juggernaut so he can't spin or Omni Slash. But I, I, I don't know. I think Orchid is sort of third option. Bloodstone is probably your your top option here, just to get the get the the, uh, the stats, get the HP and mana regen. But a BKB has definitely got to be on his mind. We we've seen this a lot, especially from from Chinese teams rushing a BKB on one of your cores, especially if you know you're behind. You need that game changing Luo, item down in bot lane. Luo, Luo yeah, gets overgrowth, and right click down. Nether Strike does come down onto DDC as the final right click from Inflame will finish him off burning. Pounces in there. The shrapnel's land and now Supernova. Ferrari and Burning caught in the flames. They've got to try and back themselves up. Storm does take down DDC, but Shrapnel right clicks ZYF. Do they see him? Can they find him? Nope. Burning pounces away. Assassinate. Oh he's no, dead. he's dead. Bottle, not enough. Not enough at all. It's just overall incredibly awkward there for IG since Trump just can't do anything. You know, the his timing window is completely off. He got he didn't get too much out of the jungle. His first two camps got blocked. And now Ehome is has such an advantage that they are the ones five manning them. Um, if you cannot push down any towers as Chen, you can get couriers apparently, because nobody was microing it. Wait, where? Sorry, what? In the, in the river. RTK's mech? Okay. That, that's, a, that's a really good pickup. Because with your home grouping up like this, mech is going to be super important. Sure, IG don't have too many items to fight into them, which is why Luo is up on this top. Is, is Luo making Mask of Madness? Mm, I mean, what else would you buy a Spirit Breaker with a Mask of Death in your inventory, right? Vlad's? Vlad, I suppose. It, yeah, it, Vlad's wouldn't be too bad, yeah. It, you know, oh. it wouldn't be too bad, but I feel like Mask of Madness is... is it, you know, it's a high risk, it's a high reward item. item isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I I was trying to find a diplomatic way of putting it, but yeah, it's a suicide <laughs> item. You run in, you go balls deep, you turn a mask of madness, and you try and kill that sniper until he's dead. No, uh, chances are you're probably gonna die yourself. But I mean, if you at this point, you know, if you can sacrifice your life for the one for the snipers, then it's worth it. Uh, that's probably his thought process. And mask of madness is actually not that bad of a farming item overall. He's got Quelling Blade as well, so he can also duck into the jungle. Although currently, you know, there are three, there are two other heroes that can occupy the jungle with Chen as well as Storm Spirit. And DDC, can you get the courier? Oh, Overgrowth doesn't work on it, mate. Where? 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 Where is he? Where is In DDC? the enemy jungle. Oh, did he really try to overgrowth the courier? Yeah, he, he tried to overgrowth the courier. Nice. Didn't work. He's so still, he's still going though. for it. He's yeah, been spotted out by everyone. <laughs> IT is here. <laughs> he didn't realize that his Inris was running out, so he was just standing there. <laughs> they didn't even need any reveal for that, because he was, you know, he just out of you know, brain fart. Lana? Being fanned by Faith here, what's stolen? Doesn't really matter right now. As the Fade Bolt will finish him off. No? Slark actually got the right click in there. No. Faith stole level 1 Hex. Ehom, Ehom, you're throwing, mate. It's not good. How are you doing? I mean, they're getting picked off the whole time now. RTK getting leashed up, but he still has dive up as well. And burning? Burning is oh living my. up to his name right now, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a level 13 Phoenix. It's. Even without mech, it's hard to, it's hard to kill him as a slug. Even using the Shadow Dance cooldown, I mean, it's gonna be back up once he revives, I guess. So it's not too bad. 
But once again, RTK, they really hate the courier. Die, courier. These bloody golden doomlings kill the damn thing. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Now, with, with Fla, like, we, we've seen Storm farming the jungle. He can flash farm decently. He can push out waves and things like that. Spear Breaker's doing a good job of that as well. Slark, though, is not a, he's not a good hero at coming back from deficits. Without no, Midas, he has very limited farming capabilities. So he does have to just try and build as many small stat items as he can. We've seen him but by drums. I, I wonder if he just goes into into BKB or Sanjinyash or something like that. Obviously, it depends on how the next couple of fights go. If he suddenly gets a burst of, you know, 1,000 gold, 1,500 gold, maybe look towards a Shadow Blade or a Blink. I, I think so. I mean, right now, there's one outer tower left to take for e -home. That means at some point, you know, you oh, take a lot of map control, but it only means, yeah, I've seen that. Um, it only means that you you are split up more, so it might be a good option to try to go for an initiating item and then start to pick people off while Ehom are split farming. Uh, but he's smoking to him and he's gonna fight RTK and yeah, there's, I don't think they can do anything about it, can they? Oh, there's a Hex stolen though. Yeah. Still Level 1 Hex though, but in comes ZYF. They've got Omid Slice, they've got everything at their disposal to take down Schwan initially and then jump onto Faith to stun out, nice, assassinate. Awesome. From yep. long range, not quite landing on the target. I love the decision to go for the Chen first as well, because they wanted to disable him and burst him as fast as possible so he couldn't send the Rubik back. That was uh, overall a very good play. So, the smoke up, I don't know what IG supports were you thinking. It was just the two of them venturing into the enemy jungle. And pretty much, if they run into any hero apart from the line, they, they can't kill them. Uh, what are we looking at overall? Ehome still have a pretty good lead here. Looking towards 13,000 net worth over IG. Experience wise, it's not that great. 7,500 experience. IG. Uh, like, who, who do you favor late game? You kind of have to look at this and think well, Ehome has Sniper and Juggernaut who scale decently. IG have Slark, Storm, and Spirit Breaker, so the Tricore there maybe comes out on top. But. Ehome then have Overgrowth that goes through BKB. Supernova Stun, when it ends, goes through BKB. Lion is a great late game support with the Hex, well, the Double Disables and Finger of Death. Whereas Honestly, I would give the edge to Ehome. Yeah. Slightly, that is. I mean, it, for IG, Storm is going to have a similar route to the Batrider. If he can pick somebody off before the fight starts, it's great. You know. But Spirit Breaker late game is really, you know, lackluster. Rubik, he doesn't really have any big ultimates to steal, apart from maybe Overgrowth. You know, supernova, you know, if you're able to see the Supernova, chances are the fight's already over by yeah. the point you can actually steal it. And Slark also in terms of... A, he's really good late game though. I mean, Slark and Storm are two heroes that, can, that scale decently, but for Ehome, I think you're, you're already said, you know, all of the heroes are kind of useful in late game as well. Yeah, I think it comes down to the support duo from IG. They were meant to do things early, and... Well, charge onto RTK. He's going to dive himself away, zip forward Ferrari, but they're not going to find the target. The turn around from Ehome, Sunray, they're trying to slow him down, but a send back from Chuan. He's going to be he, perfectly he fine. He the Chuan, Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, Chuan. That's, that's kind of sad. Yeah, I mean, Ehome, I think IG are just forcing it to, a bit too much. I mean, come on, charging a Phoenix, that's kind of... <laughs> Unless you, you're completely sure he's on his own. You're not killing him. Well, no Roshan attempt. They're going to go straight up into high ground now that Chen's down. No Hand of God. Blink Dagger for burning. But he needs to get back to base. They're going to be losing uh, tier 3s. The thing is, they just don't have to sustain. I mean, they can't run in. They have no damage to burst anybody. Faith tanking a casual assassinate, being forced going to go back to base mm -hmm. after just using one Fate Bolt. Suddenly half HP from, from 2,000 range away. Uh, Ferrari? Nice. Oh, okay. He's getting sent back. Yeah. Common thing to do. Yeah, I thought I thought he was doing the TP trick, but I didn't see the you know TP animation. But regardless, Rax here going down for E home. They're taking this, uh, taking this all the way to the bank. 23 minutes in. IG being put in their place a little bit by this draft. Phoenix still has his entire arsenal of spells at his disposal. IG, the, you know. I, I mentioned this a good 20 minutes ago. They've got nothing really big for team fights. They've got no Ravage, no, yeah. uh, no RP, and uh, Black Hole. There is no team fight ultimate. It's well, all, all based no around. Push. Yeah. Yeah, there's no. Okay, it's all. Like, the entire draft is based around on pressuring into towers, finding solo pickoffs. But if they lose their lanes, 
E-Homes, they just grouped up as five. Started pushing into towers of their own, and defending them was not easy for IG. Yeah. IG, they look running out, thinking that maybe e -Home are going to go for the Roche attempt, but uh, instead they might pick a pick in the pickoff of Inflame. Can they get there in time? Yeah, that's enough burst. Oh yeah, there's the solar pickoff, and now maybe again on ROTK. The pings come out, but they're not going to chase him down. Well, it was a good call. They saw the TP up from the Juggernaut, so they knew that E-Home at most were only four people. Bernie, <laughs> he thinks there's a ward here. Nope, there is no ward. It's just DDC the tree and running around. God, that Phoenix is so fat. <laughs> he's gonna have gold for Shiva's guard as well. It's currently flying out on the Korea. Burning. Burning. He's gone for RTK. Supernova is still available, so he can throw this out if he needs. Which I think Burning was trying to bait, but with a mech and living armor, Burning has to pounce away. He's got to run. He's got to get out. Oh. The dive forward. Oh, Shadow Dance is needed as well. Zed White. Oh, yeah. no way. No freaking way. Bye bye. That's that. That is that is gonna be the most annoying thing is for like for anyone being taken down by a train of Phoenix and then ZYF just sneakily hiding away in Viz. Uh, Burning's performance this game has not been too good. He's just always going on the Phoenix. I mean, a bit of all. Ah, bot lane, another zip there coming onto Inflame. Can they kill him in time? Yep, well, he's got one charges. Oh, he's fine. He is perfectly fine right now. Ferrari has to back up. They know Lam. Lam still has the finger of death. Oh, RTK. The TP from Ferrari. It's going to get him out. No assassinate in time, but Faith is caught in a pretty rough situation here. The thing is, Eon, you know, ZYF just goes, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to take Roshan. Like I care. Shrapnel for Rubik. Oh yeah. So ready Are they to gonna go to inflame? Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. I, mean, I don't see Juggernaut dying anytime soon either. It's... A bit of split push coming out there from the Chen creeps, but I think Bio might as well just get over the tower and go for base instead. Yeah. Let's go tier three and Rax. Why, why the hell not? Chuan is trying to split. Oh man. Yeah, man. they're fat. All of them are so farmed. It's been a long, long time since I've seen Desolated Sniper. It's legit, man. Yeah, I, I know. Like it a lot. Like I, I miss Desolated Clinks. Back in the Dota One days, before you could, uh, before you could actually do it with Searing Arrows, you'd right-click someone with Desolator and then manually cast Searing Arrows to get the most damage out because they were physical. Yeah. Then Sniper with a oh Luo. L Luo oh charges oh in, he's been spotted out, they know exactly where he is, the assassinate. We'll give them further vision after this ward. As, uh, oh, DDC jumps in with a blink dagger, overgrowth on the two, Ferrari manages to get himself away. Uh, just ch chopping down the cow there, nothing to do. It's so hard for I to do anything, I mean, they know that if they let them get into the base, it's... <laughs> They can't do anything either, you know? So it's kind of a do or die situation right now. They just have to... Frankly speaking, they can just call GG, but... They're probably gonna have to want to have one more Hail Mary fight Faith. He's currently gonna die in two hits. Okay. There we go. Okay, that Omni Slash did a lot of damage. Not only catching Faith, but burning as well. Now in jumps the Lion, the Sniper Desolator, rips Chuan apart. The double buyback here from Rubik and the Spirit Breaker. Charging in, but GG has been called. Game number two, going the way of E-Home here to draw things up one apiece in the D2CL Chinese group stages. So that's that series done. E-Home taking a game off IG after I losing... I can't believe I'm saying it, but MVP RTK. <laughs> he, no, he looked really, really good. Yes, I don't think he made any misplays this game. It's kind of unusual. I mean, it's, 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 it's surprising me since I've never seen his Phoenix before. But apparently it's just, um, I don't know, it's maybe secret strat of E-Home, you know, unveiling the RTK Phoenix. It's actually here he can play legitimately without dying too much. Well, that's pretty well played from them. Next up is HGT versus C-Deck in 25 minutes time. Actually, getting closer to 20 minutes time now if that's going to update, yeah? So stay tuned for that, guys. It may start early, I'll let you guys know. But uh, stick around, listen to some music and watch the ads.